he pins me up against this little this little rail and he's screaming. He's like, what the, What do you want? Nobody call the police. And I was like, oh, I can't believe this, I'm gonna die. I had an assignment. Residents were saying that this certain apartment was, um, they were selling drugs out of the apartment. So when I went to the apartment in plain clothes, I, it was a line outside of the apartment. The person was coming out and when they was coming out, they looked at me and when they looked at me, he was like, hey, what's up, officer? Now, everybody on that line, everybody was talking, having a good conversation. But as soon as he said, what's up, officer, you could hear a pin drop. So during training, everybody's always said, if you ever get made as an officer, you gotta, you gotta act like somebody just smacked your mother. You gotta be, it's so offensive. I was like, who are you talking about? I will. And then I did it so fast, and I was yelling, I was screaming, I was cursing at him. He was like, Oh man, I'm sorry, man. I thought you just looked like this all of a No, I know. And then the guy at the door, he had a shotgun. He was like, yo, it's closed. Everybody get out of here. And then he went, closed the door, and everybody just cleared out the hall. But when I was walking out, it, I, I can hear tone. You ever had your, your ears pop? You hear that, you hear that tone? I had that tone in my head all the way walking out. I think I had to leave that day too, because after that, I couldn't shake this headache. Just because you go from zero to 100, just like that, it can happen. First, they send you to undercover school. It's like a away camp. <laughs> they send you away and you just go through scenarios. Other undercover officers come and then they talk to you about what it is to actually work in the undercover assignment. They're trying to strip you from the uniform, from the officer thinking, officer lingo, the culture of being a cop. Most cops only have other cops as friends. We all hang out together, we all talk together. I mean, you live as a unit when it comes down to the culture of policing. So what they try to do in undercover school, strip you from that. My partner got off at two, three o'clock in the morning. He had to leave early. So as I was riding back to the precinct, this lady, right, she flags me down. And she was like, my boyfriend, he's from um, Most Wanted and he's upstairs and everybody's looking for him. You don't know how many times I've heard, you know, a girlfriend say their boyfriend is highly dangerous, he's gonna kill the police, like he's just, a, because they got pissed off at him because of whatever reason. In my mind, I was like, let me just go talk to this guy, see what him and his girl was the problem. She showed, they living in a rooming house, right? So you walk up these, you walk up these stairs and then you turn and he had this railing, right? that on the second floor that was about this high. So she tells me he's in a certain door. So as I was walking by this room, the door swung open and it wasn't the door that she even pointed by. And this dude was about six, six. He had boxes on, right? He had nothing on the top. Not, he just had boxes on. He pins me up against this little, this little rail and he's screaming. He's like, what do you want? Nobody call the police. And I'm just, I'm leaned over the rail like this and I'm looking down, I was like, can I shoot him, right? And this is what I'm saying to myself, without getting flipped over this rail. Just the mere fact that he was that much bigger. And if I shoot him, he's just gonna lean. So I don't know where this came from. And I was like, dude, what are you talking about? I'm looking for a little four-year-old missing kid. She had a pink sweater. She got the little lights in her shoes. I said, the neighborhood be canvassing the neighborhood. I was just checking the area. You seen her? <laughs> right. So he looks and he says, oh man, he, he puts out his hand and he pulls me up. He says, man, I'm sorry, man. Y'all always messing with people. I said, man, that might be the case, man, but not this time. I said, I'm really looking for this girl. I said, have you seen her? He was like, nah, nah, nah. He said, I hope you find her, man. I said, if you see her, call 911. And he's like, all right, thanks. I went downstairs. This girlfriend was downstairs. She said, did you see him? <laughs> You ain't tell me that. You picked the wrong door. I said, lady almost got me killed. <laughs> well, I was a part of an investigative unit and the captain assigned our unit to investigate this guy who stole some checks and he was going around cashing them at ch check cashing place. So we picked a, a check cashing place to where we thought he was gonna come next. So we're in plain clothes, plain clerk employee. The guy comes in and he passes the check walks away from the counter after receiving his money. We grabbed him, placed him in custody, no problem. So my partner now, he's like, you always get to interrogate. He says, let me do it. I said, you sure? He's like, yeah, yeah. He said, I can do it. I said, all right. He has the um, subject in the box, interrogation room. And now I'm at the window, you know, I'm watching him. Guys in handcuffs, the table's there. And my partner, he has the check in his hand. He was like, 
look, you caught red-handed. I can talk to the DA, try to reduce some time, because if you don't cooperate, I'm asking the DA for the max. And he slid the check in front of him. He said, now do the right thing, I'll be right back. So he comes outside. So I'm standing there and I'm watching him and his back is to the glass so I can see the subject at the table. So I see the check and then I see the subject like this. And he leans over and he eats the check. So now I'm looking at the office. I said, yo man, him eating a check, is that part of your game plan? Take it around. So he turns to me and says, oh! And he runs back inside. He's trying to get in his mouth. And the guy is chewing and chewing and chewing. So he comes back outside. I was like, yo, what am I supposed to do? I said, your guess is good as mine. I don't want no part of it. Don't subpoena me to court. Though I have nothing to do with this case because dude just ate your evidence.